and welcome to our midweek devotional. I am Pastor Stephanie, part-time assistant minister of care here at Shepherd of the Hills. If you're like me, um, it's sometimes difficult to understand intellectually that Jesus is both fully divine and fully human. And today during the season of Lent, as we think about who Jesus was and still is, because he does live on, um, I would invite you to kind of think about that. Fully human, fully divine. How do we even attempt to grasp that? Uh, Jesus, of course, is different from any other historical figure because Jesus still lives. Even though he died over 2,000 years ago, Jesus is still alive. And because of that, this is the hopeful message of the resurrection that we look forward to during the season of Lent. Can you imagine that Jesus is just as available to you and to me as he was to his disciples when they were living, teaching, following him for three years? It's that close. He's still available to you and, and to me. We can have a personal relationship with Jesus. The invitation is always there. Yet the truth of the matter is that many of us, myself included, from time to time throughout my life, don't really feel like we know Jesus, let alone consider him to be a close friend. As his cousin John the Baptist declared to the people surrounding him, there is one among you whom you do not recognize. And sometimes we are like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They didn't recognize the risen Lord. We don't recognize the risen Lord, even though he is right here walking alongside us. Jesus lives and is alive and is always inviting us into a relationship with him. But if you're like me, sometimes I'm willing and eager and ready to do that, and sometimes I'm a little bit hesitant. So why is that? What is the hesitance? Well, perhaps it's because we've been taught that Jesus is God. In the Old Testament, God revealed his name to Moses saying, I am who I am. And in the Gospel of John, the eighth chapter, we hear Jesus saying, Believe me, I am who I am long before Abraham was anything. Or in another translation, Jesus says, I tell you most solemnly, before Abraham ever was, I am. Jesus is the I am of the Old Testament. By his way of life, his teaching, his miracles and signs, Jesus gives evidence that he is indeed God. He is divine. As the Christian community reflected upon the events of Jesus' life, especially the resurrection, they came to believe in him as God. Either he is what he claimed to be, or he is the greatest imposter that ever lived. Maybe you've heard that quote before. Either he is what he claimed to be, or he is the greatest imposter that ever lived. If you're like me, I'm guessing that many of us see Jesus as more divine than human. It may be a little uncomfortable to think of Jesus as human. We are not alone in our struggles with that kind of understanding. The church over time has wrestled with this mystery, fully human, fully divine. Because he is human, we can relate to him. He understands, he shares in our struggles. Because he is divine, he saves, he lifts up, he gives life. He is the solution to our human problems. Yes, Jesus is God, 
yes, Jesus is God, but Jesus is also man. Jesus is not a distant God, more to be feared than loved. He is Emmanuel, God with us, God with you, with me, right now, in this moment, in your life. Picture Jesus walking alongside you on your life's journey. Picture Jesus sitting next to you on a bench. Picture Jesus sitting at the table right now with you. Picture Jesus sitting here, right next to me on my patio. Here are a few images from scripture. I invite you to remember these moments in Jesus's life. Jesus, worn out from hours of walking, sitting at the well and asking a Samaritan woman for a drink of water. Jesus, tired from continuously teaching and explaining himself to his disciples, voicing exasperated disappointment when Philip once again challenges his authenticity. Frustrated, irritated, tired, thirsty. Jesus, angry at the people selling cattle and doves within the temple vault, putting together a whip of strips of leather, which would have taken some time, I can just see him sitting there making that whip, taking the time to put it together and then chasing them out of the temple. Jesus pleading with his disciples to stay with him in the garden of Gethsemane because he needed support as he prayed to his father for a way out of what was coming. Jesus weeping real tears at the death of his friend Lazarus. Jesus seeing the need for additional wine at a friend's wedding and showing empathy in providing it for his friend. Jesus standing between the adulterer and those ready to stone her showed empathy and grace and compassion. Jesus, firmly correcting Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and then celebrating the man's decision to begin a new and honest lifestyle. Jesus, before the crowds and in front of Pilate, wrongly accused, wrongly accused, abandoned, by his disciples and friends, abandoned by his disciples and his other friends, a victim of betrayal. Jesus, showing a kind and encouraging heart by encouraging his disciples to welcome children. Children. Jesus, crying out forsaken on the cross. Jesus, fully divine, but yes, fully human. He was thirsty. He got angry. He was betrayed. He was exasperated. He was irritated. He celebrated people's gifts and their decisions to live a better life. He welcomed children who were not very well thought of or cared for in that society, unlike our society. It was probably overboard to take care of our children. Not only is Jesus fully divine and fully human, Jesus is also both Savior and Lord. Jesus' death on the cross brought about the forgiveness of sin. Do you remember that the curtain separating the outer temple from the Holy of Holies ripped from the top to the bottom at the time of Jesus' death? 
What a powerful image that is. Jesus' death opened wide the way for reconciliation and a relationship with God. Not only just then, that invitation remains today. That curtain is ripped open from top to bottom and remains open throughout time. Jesus, the mediator, if you will, between God and man, Jesus, our Savior. He is the way to the Father. Early Christians were called people of the way. People of the way. There's a paraphrase of our Bible that is simply called the way. People of the way. From the Gospel of John, we read, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You and I, we too are called to be people of the way, to walk that way walk following Christ who has shown us the way and who makes possible our return to the Father. I'd like to close with a beautiful passage from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality quality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient, even to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You may know the chorus he is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Fully human, fully divine, Savior and Lord. Jesus lives now here Emmanuel God with us and because he is with us here and now we can approach him with confidence we can relate to him in a fully human manner because he was fully human and he knows our sorrow. He knows what it feels like to lose a dear, dear friend. He knows what it feels like to be betrayed and victimized and hungry and thirsty. He gets it. He gets it. He gets you. Jesus invites us to encounter him in that way, knowing that he is fully divine and our Savior and our Lord as well. Thanks be to God.